Hello and welcome back to my channel. Now recently I've been scouring the charity shops, thrift shops, looking for a new point and shoot camera that I can use every day. I was looking for sort of under the £20, $30 mark and I came across this, the Ricoh TF500, um, also known as the TF900 and I've seen a few YouTube reviews of this camera so I thought I'd have to give it a go. So the basics. It was made in the 80s, has autofocus and has two lens choices. 35mm at 2.8 or 70mm 5.6, which are two focal lengths I do use in my work. So before we go through the shots, I'm just going to go through the advantages and disadvantages of the camera physically. Um, ergonomically, it's not too good given that it's just a bit too bulky. And I mean, the buttons are easy enough to use and it's kind of easy to navigate all the settings but it's just a bit of a brick. And I didn't realize who I bought it that it didn't even fit in my coat pocket. So it's got to go in your bag. Um, but it did come with this shoulder strap, which is super handy as I do like to carry my cameras around on my shoulder. Then obviously you could just buy one of these and attach it to any camera you like. Um, but I do really love the LCD screen on the top telling you the ISO of the film. So you know the camera has read the DX code correctly, which is very handy for these old cameras and sometimes they can get it wrong the amount of shots you have taken, and if the exposure compensation button has been pressed, which is again, super handy. Settings wise, it is really basic, apart from the exposure compensation. But if anything, I look for that in a point and shoot camera, I don't wanna be fiddling around and altering the settings when I've seen a scene I wanna shoot. Um, now onto the shots. <laughs> Quick disclaimer, they're not the best shots I've ever taken. Basically the plan was, uh, cause I want a new daily sort of everyday camera, I was just gonna carry it with me over a few days and sort of record and document my daily life. Um, but I quickly became really demotivated when I went out and tried to use it for the first time. When I found out you couldn't turn the flash on or off, it automatically decides for you if it's gonna come on. The only way I worked out to turn the flash off on this is when you press the shutter down half and it pops up, you then have to push it back down again and keep it pressed down and then take the shot. But that being said, <laughs> the flash is really powerful. When it did work and it went off, especially at night, it did light up the scene how I would want it to, um, especially for a sort of point and shoot kind of thing. And during this week, when I was gonna kind of document everything, there was a few um, events and things I went to, such as like a stand-up comedy gig, where you were allowed to take photos, but not with flash. And I just couldn't rely on the camera. Um, and so that kind of frustrated me a lot. So I think I kind of ended up just taking sort of any kind of shots just to try and demonstrate what it can do. But yeah, shots wise, they just demonstrate what it can do hopefully not my photographic ability. So yeah, that's the disclaimer out the way, now onto the shots. Overall, I do generally like most of the images. I mean, like the quality of them, not the content. Um, and 90% of the time the autofocus was on point. So that's really good. Um, I did take some photos on a bus um, just to see how the camera dealt with movement. But I think maybe this was a little bit overly ambitious and not really representative of what the camera can do. Um, but they came all right. I don't think I'd use them for anything necessarily, but yeah, they're all right. Um, I also tried it out in both artificial and natural light. First up, we went to a supermarket, uh, very exciting. And then it was a beautiful sunny day, so we headed down to the beach. And I was shooting um, Agfa Film 200. And I do actually really like the images um, like on the beach and the pier. So yeah, they're probably my favorite images from the role. I did also very excitingly take pictures of my toaster. Um, <laughs> This was just to demonstrate the delay in the timer and the shutter speed. So basically every time my bales pop, <laughs> pop out the toaster, they sort of jump up and there's like a solid amount of time to take a photo. But every time I went to do it, there was half a second delay, which again is another really frustrating element of this camera. I also do like this image of the bird, but it wasn't like I just grabbed the camera and took the shot. Because of the delay, I had to track the birds flying and then take the photo. So again, like it kind of takes the fun out of it, especially for a point and shoot camera, you kind of just want it there ready. But I do like the shot. Um, and another thing I do like about the camera is on the back, you can set date, time or turn it off. And I wasn't 100% sure, I thought this might happen, but the date or time, whatever you select or turn it off, um, does appear on your images. And I don't know, I kind of thought this might be a bit naff, but and then I said it on the time option because I said it on the time option because I don't know in the 1980s if they just thought we would never get to this. But on the date, it doesn't go up to 2020. You can either set the date, you can only set it from 1980 to 2019, which was just kind of freaky. Um, so I said it on the time and yeah, like in the bottom right of the frame, um, you've got the time imprinted. I don't know when this would ever be super helpful, but I actually kind of like the aesthetic of it, which I didn't think I would. Um, 
So that is it for this camera. If you have used it before, let me know down below what you thought of it. And please do recommend any point and shoot cameras you've used for sort of like under £20, £30, uh, which you would recommend me trying out. Um, but that is it for the video. Thank you so much for everyone who commented on the last one. A film suit video is on the way. I have submerged the film in my chosen liquid. I am now just waiting for it to dry, then I'll send it off to the lab. So until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>